in this example we have a block of material resting on a slope and that slope is at an angle of 15 degrees. We've been given the mass of the block is 6.5 kilograms, the initial velocity of the block at the top of the slope is 0 meters per second, therefore the block is stationary, and we've been asked to find the acceleration of the block as it travels down the slope and the final velocity of the block once it reaches the bottom of the slope at a distance of 2.5 metres from the starting point. Now as we can see from the diagram, the only force acting on the block is the weight, and in this first section of the video we're going to assume that the coefficient of friction between the block and the surface is zero, or the surface is frictionless. Now what we're going to do on this video is we're going to shift our frame of reference, and we're going to shift our frame of reference so that the x-axis runs down the slope and the y-axis is normal to the slope. The reason we're going to do that is because it makes our calculations a whole lot easier if all we do is shift our perspective as shown. Now hopefully by doing that you can see that the block is going to slide in the x-axis. There'll be no movement in the y-axis because the slope itself is going to prevent movement in the y-direction. So now that we've done that, we can probably also see that as the only force acting on the block is the weight, the force causing the block to move is going to be a component of the weight. So if we turn our weight into a right angle triangle, we can see that there's a component of the weight acting down the slope. And that's the force we're trying to find, F. That's the force that's going to cause this block to move. I'm going to re-sketch that triangle because it's got some important information on it. We've got the weight of the block, W. We've got the component of the weight acting down the slope, which is going to give us our force. And then we've got a component of that force which is normal to the slope, giving us our right angle triangle. Now the other piece of information that we know is that the angle inside the triangle here is 15 degrees because it's going to be the same as the angle of the slope. So first of all, we're going to calculate the weight of our block. Then we're going to find the force acting down the slope, F. And then we can determine the two key pieces of information, the acceleration of the block and the velocity of the block when it reaches the bottom of the slope. So first of all, the weight of the block is mass times gravity. We're given the mass of the block is 6.5 kilograms. And we know that gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. Therefore, the weight of our block is 63.765 newtons. Next we need to find the force F, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to label our triangle. The longest side is the hypotenuse, the side opposite the angle is the opposite, and the remaining side is the adjacent. So in this case, we can see that we need to find the opposite on that triangle. Well, as it's the opposite, we can use one of our formulas from trigonometry that states that sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. And timesing each side of that formula by h, we'll get the opposite, the thing we're trying to find, equals hypotenuse sine theta. All we're going to do is plug in our own values now. So instead of the opposite, we're going to use f, because we're trying to find the force acting down the slope. And instead of hypotenuse, we're going to input our weight of 63.765. And our angle is 15 degrees. And that gives us a force acting down the slope of 16.50 newtons. Because we're neglecting friction this time, that's going to be the total net force acting on the block down the slope. So next we can calculate our acceleration. And we know that F equals MA. Therefore, we can rearrange that to make A the subject. And we'll get A is F over m. Well we have that information now. We know that the net force acting down the slope is 16.5 newtons and we know that the mass of the block is 6.5 kilograms. Therefore the acceleration of that block as it slides down the slope is 2.54 meters per second squared. And we know that it's meters per second squared because we've worked in SI units throughout. So let's add our new information to the left hand side. We now know that the acceleration is 2.54 meters per second squared 
but we also know that the force acting down the slope as a result of the weight of the object is 16.50 newtons. So now we can move on and look at our equations of motion because we want the velocity of the block when it reaches the bottom of the slope. We know the acceleration A, we know the initial velocity U, the block stationary at the top of the slope. We're trying to find the final velocity V and we also know the distance is 2.5 meters. So we're looking for an equation of motion that links V, U, A and S together. Well, if you refer back to your equation sheet, you'll know that V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Now, we've already said that the block's stationary at the top of the slope, so U is just zero. Therefore, U squared is zero. We can lose that term there, and we'll be left with V squared equals 2AS. And rearranging that to get V on its own, we need to square root each side of the equation because we want v on its own, not v squared. So our final formula for finding v becomes v equals the square root of 2as. All we need to do is input our values. 2 is a constant. Our acceleration is 2.54. And our distance is given as 2.5 meters. So the final velocity of the block, once it reaches the bottom of the slope, bearing in mind we're neglecting friction, is 3.56 meters per second. And again, we know it's meters per second because we've worked in SI units throughout. So now we're going to repeat that, except this time we're going to include a coefficient of friction. And we're going to take that coefficient of friction to be 0 0.1. So now on the left hand side, we have our new coefficient of friction. 0 0.1 and I've also removed the value of the acceleration down the slope because if we have friction then the net force is going to change and if the net force changes then the acceleration down the slope is also going to change and to our diagram I'm going to add two things I'm going to add the normal reaction force which acts perpendicular to the slope or from our new set of axes in the y direction and I'm going to add our friction force F subscript R, the resistive force due to friction. Now if you recall we shifted the axis so that the x-axis ran down the slope and the y-axis was perpendicular to the slope and as we refer to our diagram we know that there's going to be no movement in the y-direction. The slope's going to prevent any movement in the y-direction. So what that must mean then is that that normal reaction force is going to equal this component here of the weight. Now that has to be true, otherwise the forces in our new y direction wouldn't balance. So that component of the weight there is the normal reaction. I'm going to re-sketch the triangle for the weight. So we've got the weight acting downwards. Now there's a component of that force that acts perpendicular to the slope like so. And there's a component of that force that acts parallel to the slope. And we have our right angle in there. The angle inside the triangle is 15 degrees. And our normal reaction is going to be equal and opposite to the y component of our weight. So let's label our triangle. We have the hypotenuse is the longest side. The opposite is opposite the angle. And the adjacent is the remaining side. So we need to find the adjacent. So returning to trigonometry, we have cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Therefore, adjacent is hypotenuse cos theta. Well, our hypotenuse is our weight. And we've already said that our weight equals 63.765 newtons. If you recall, that was our mass of 6.5 times gravity of 9.81. And we know that our angle is 15 degrees. So when we calculate the adjacent on that triangle, that comes out to be 61.592 to three decimal places.
Now we've already said that the adjacent on that triangle is the same as our normal reaction because that's the forces balanced in our modified y direction. So now we can calculate our friction force because our friction force is the coefficient of friction times the normal reaction which in this case is 0 0.1 times the 61.592 that we've just calculated and that gives us a force of 6.159 newtons to three decimal places. So here's the important thing. We have 6.159 newtons acting up the slope, but we have 16.50 newtons acting down the slope. The force acting down the slope is unchanged because the weight of the object is still the same. Therefore, the sum of our forces is going to be the forces down the slope, 16.50, minus the force up the slope, 6.159. So the sum of our forces is 10.34 newtons. Now that's positive, and our positive x direction is down the slope. So the block's gonna move down the slope as we'd expect in response to the pull of gravity. So we have our force. Now we can calculate our acceleration because our acceleration is the sum of the forces divided by the mass. Same formula as before, except now we have the sum of the forces rather than just the force. So that's 10.34 divided by our mass of 6.5, giving us an acceleration of 1.59 meters per second squared. And then the last thing that we need to calculate is the velocity. And our formula for velocity is going to be the same as before because all of the other parameters are the same. V equals the square root of 2AS, which is the square root of 2 times our acceleration of 1.59 times our distance of 2.5. And when we run all of that through our calculators, we get a velocity of 2.82 metres per second. OK, so let's just quickly recap. Now, if you remember, when we ignored friction, our net force, or the total force acting on the block, was 16.50 newtons down the slope. That gave rise to an acceleration of 2.54 meters per second squared and a velocity of 3.56 meters per second. Now when we include friction, our net force has dropped from 16.50 to 10.34. So the net force acting on the block is reduced and that gives rise to an acceleration of 1.59 meters per second squared and a velocity at the bottom of the slope of 2.82 meters per second. So as we would expect, when we include friction, the speed of the block when it reaches the bottom of the slope is reduced.